As we start our discussion about particle motion, we first need to talk about the Reynolds number, which is a dimensionless number. that tells us something about the ratio of the inertial forces to the viscous forces, which has to do with the inertia of the particle itself compared to the drag in this case. And the equation for the Reynolds number, you might remember from fluid mechanics, is rho v we're going to use d sub p for our size, divided by mu, where rho is the density of the fluid. Our fluid is air. And so this is equal to 1.2 kilograms per meter, cubic meter at standard temperature and pressure. V is the velocity of the particle. So that will be in meters per second. D sub p is the diameter of the particle. That would be in meters. And mu is our kinematic viscosity. Which is equal to 1.85 times 10 to the minus fifth kilograms per meter second at standard conditions. Now, if the Reynolds number turns out to be less than 2,000, that means that our flow conditions are laminar. If it's somewhere in the range of 2,000 to 10,000, then it's in the transition regime. And if it's greater than 2,000, then the flow is turbulent. To calculate the settling velocity of a particle, we are going to conduct a force balance on it. We have a particle which is moving at some terminal velocity. V sub t. It's being acted on by the forces of gravity. Because it's moving, there's also drag in the opposite direction. And then we also have buoyancy because it is in a fluid. Balancing these forces, the gravitational force has to equal the buoyancy force plus the drag force. Before we go any further, let us establish that the volume of this particle is the volume of a sphere, so it's pi over 6 d sub p cubed, which is the same as 4 thirds pi r squared, pi r cubed. And the mass of the particle is equal to the density times the volume. So it's equal to rho sub p, the density of the particle, times pi over 6 d sub p cubed. Now we're going to take each of these forces and write them in terms of the particle properties. We'll start with gravity. So the gravitational force f sub g is equal to m times g m is the mass of the particle. So this is, as we saw before, the density of the particle, rho sub p times pi over 6, d sub p cubed times g. Rho sub p is the density of the particle. For airborne particles, this is often similar to the density of water. So that would be 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. We can also have denser ones, 
maybe up to 2,500 kilograms per cubic meter. The buoyancy force is the weight of the displaced fluid. which is air in this case. So F sub B is equal to the mass of the air times G, the mass of the air that's been displaced by the particle. And so this is rho sub G, that's the density of the air, or of, I'm calling it the gas, times the volume that's been displaced, which is pi over six D sub P cubed times G. So rho sub g is the density of the gas which is air in this case and is 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter under standard conditions. The equation for the drag force on a sphere comes from fluid mechanics and it is F sub d equals 1 half rho sub g times pi over 4 d sub p squared, this is the cross-sectional area of that sphere, so it's the area of a circle, times v sub t squared times c sub d. c sub d is the drag coefficient And it depends on the Reynolds number. This can be a challenge sometimes because if we're trying to solve for the terminal settling velocity v sub t, we need to know the drag coefficient to use, but that depends on the Reynolds number, which depends on v sub t. But uh, there is a relationship at low Reynolds numbers. So if the Reynolds number is less than one, then C sub D is equal to 24 over the Reynolds number, or 24 times mu divided by rho sub G, V sub T, D sub P, where mu is the kinematic viscosity. This figure shows the drag coefficient as a function of the Reynolds number, and you can see that it's a straight line for low values of the Reynolds number, less than one. Um, at higher values, it starts, that curve starts uh, curving, and then it eventually levels off at higher Reynolds numbers. But making that substitution for the drag coefficient, we can now write F sub D, the drag force, is equal to one half times the density of the gas, one half rho sub G, times pi over four D sub P squared, times V sub T squared, and now we'll substitute in the expression for the drag coefficient at low Reynolds numbers, which is 24 mu over rho sub G, V sub T, D sub P. A lot of things cancel out, and we're left with three pi mu D sub P, V sub T. So recall, we have expressions now for the gravitational force, the buoyancy force, and the drag force. And we're going to combine those in our original force balance, where we move the buoyancy force over to the left-hand side. So we have F sub G minus F sub B is equal to F sub D. So the drag force, or the gravitational force, was rho sub P times pi over 6, D sub P cubed, times g. The buoyancy force was rho sub g, the density of the gas, times pi over 6 d sub p cubed times g, and this equals the drag force, which is 3 pi mu d sub p v sub t. On the left-hand side, we can combine things as rho sub p minus rho sub g. Then we still have pi over 6 d sub p cubed times g is equal to 3 pi mu d sub p v sub t. When we're talking about particles in the air, 
the density of the particle is much, much greater than the density of the air of the gas. And so we can drop rho sub g. So we're going to say that this is basically insignificant zero. We're looking at a number where we have a thousand kilograms per cubic meter for rho and one for rho sub g. Um, and 1,000 minus 1 is 999, still pretty close to 1,000. We can now rearrange this equation to solve for V sub t, and that gives us Stokes' law for the terminal settling velocity of a sphere, a particle, which is V sub t is equal to rho sub p times g d sub p squared over 18 mu. We had some conditions on this. It was true for Reynolds numbers less than one. And so it turns out that this is good for particle sizes from about five to 100 microns. So once you get larger than 100 microns, uh, you, uh, you're at higher Reynolds numbers. And you need to use a different expression for the drag coefficient. For particles smaller than five, we'll have to talk about a slip correction. In our derivation of the settling velocity, we used an equation for drag that assumes that the particle is moving through a nice, well-behaved fluid. But if the particle is really small, then it can actually, if it's near the size of the vast gas molecules, it can actually slip between them. And then there's less drag than if the fluid were a kind of a continuous medium. So there's these small particles essentially slip between air molecules. Which means that there's less drag. So the settling velocity is higher than we would have predicted. And in order to uh, parameterize this, we should start talk by talking about the Knudsen number. Kn, which is equal to 2 times lambda over d sub p, where lambda is the mean free path of gas molecules. You could think of it crudely as kind of the distance between them or how far they travel before bumping into another one. And at standard conditions, it's that distance is 0 0.065 micrometers. Now, using the cunning, the Knudsen number, we can come up with an expression for the Cunningham slip correction factor. k sub c, which is equal to 1 plus the Knudsen number, times 1.257 plus 0 0.400 times the exponential of minus 1.10 divided by the Knudsen number. This is our correction factor, so now we multiply our settling velocity, v sub t, by k sub c. So this expression for the settling velocity applies for very small particles. So it's rho sub p times g times d sub p squared, just as we had before, times k sub c, which is 1 or greater, divided by 18 mu. what the value of the Cunningham slip correction factor is. This is in log scale on the x-axis. X axis. So you can see that for particles larger than a few microns, 
uh, the Cunningham slip correction factor is one, but as you go to smaller and smaller particle sizes, go to the left, you can see that value um, at a diameter of one micron is equal to 1.16. So the terminal settling velocity is 16% higher than you would expect. And as you go to smaller sizes, that can become tens or even hundreds. Finally, these graphs show um, the terminal settling velocity in millimeters per second as a function of the diameter of the particle. So as expected, as the particle, particle gets larger, we get up to higher settling velocities, you know, hundreds of millimeters per second. Um, but for small particles that stay in the atmosphere for a long time, smaller than 10, we have very slow settling velocities. And the bottom graph shows this in log scale so that you can see what's happening below 10. Um, but at those very small particle sizes, we, we do have extremely slow settling velocities, so they can stay suspended in the atmosphere for, for hours, days, um, long enough to travel across the ocean. For larger particles, those larger than about 100 microns in size, The flow isn't quite as laminar now, and our drag coefficient is no longer equal to 24 over the Reynolds number by itself. So there's an empirical fit to calculate the drag coefficient as a function of Reynolds number, where we have 24 over the Reynolds number times 1 plus 0 0.15 times the Reynolds number to the 0 0.687. If you now replace this in the derivation of the settling velocity uh, equation, you'll find that you can't get the Reynolds number or velocities to ca cancel out on the right-hand side. And so now you have a settling velocity, which is a function of the Reynolds number. But the Reynolds number is a function of the settling velocity. So in order to solve this, you must iterate like guess some starting settling velocity, use that to calculate the Reynolds number, and then go ahead and calculate your settling velocity. If they match up, that's great, you're done. If not, start with a new guess and hopefully you'll get closer. The other way to uh, estimate settling velocities for large particles is by using this figure, 5-8 from the textbook. Uh, this has on the lower x-axis, it the diameter, particle diameter, goes from 0.1 to 30 microns, and the upper x-axis handles larger particles. It goes from 10 up to 3,000 microns. And the y-axis are settling velocity in centimeters per second. Notice that they have different scales on the left and the right. And for the different lines in the middle, uh, they correspond to different densities. And there's these little arrows here, which show which axes to read. So for this, this line, the rightmost line, it corresponds to a particle density of one, and it's for the small particles. You, you'd go down to pick your particle diameter and read to the right to get your settling velocity. And then for the, the other set of curves, you read up and to the left. So let's say I have a density of particle density of three, I look at that row sub p equals three, the leftmost line, and I'm interested in a particle that's 200 microns in diameter. So I go up to the top to 200, drop down to where that intersects that uh, the row sub p equals three line, and then I read to the left, and I see that I have a settling velocity of about uh, 150, 160, maybe centimeters per second.